So um, we're going to go into our meditation lecture. And we've already had a bit of experience meditating, so it should be fun to kind of share a little bit about what we've experienced so far. Um, so why do you think we meditate? <laughs> why are we doing this every day? To learn how to control our minds. To learn how to control our minds and our thoughts. Yep. Why else do we meditate? Mm. Nice. Just starting off fresh each day. Cleansing. It is very cleansing. To connect. Yep. Just even this little exercise we did, it's, it's a sense of connecting connecting to ourself, to our inner self, our higher self, connecting to each other in this space and connecting to all that exists. And that's how I think of meditation too. We start from that inner depth and then expand it out from there. Connecting is big, yeah. Yeah. Why else do we meditate? Yeah, totally. Relaxation. How about what we were just talking about in our lecture about how it relates to life? Practicing watching the thoughts in the mind. Letting go of the thoughts. Yep. So letting go of the thoughts in the mind and then using that technique to be able to manage life. So as you're managing different situations in life, you know, letting them pass by and move through rather than holding on and connecting to them or um, judging them or manipulating them or trying to change them. And oftentimes, even when we start our meditation, one of the first things we talk about is how to come to that inner stillness, you know, come to that state of inner stillness, come to that state of inner peace. And it's not always like that, that it happens, but just that conscious thought, that intention behind it does create more availability to that stillness. Um, and yesterday, Randy was talking about stillness and motion and how those two interact in our practice. So there's times where we're still within, even though we're moving. So we might be moving through an asana practice, but yet we maintain that stillness within. Or we might be you know, experiencing emotions like we just talked about on different levels, but we still maintain that inner peace. So that inner peace and stillness does come from this practice of meditation. And so how do we relate it to yoga? I mean, why are we learning meditation in a yoga teacher training? Stira Sukhamasanam is, Stira Sukhamasanam is one of the, um, the lectures that we'll talk about with Dennis, and it's about finding steadiness and comfort in your seated posture. And it now relates to yoga in all ways, but it was really before practice meant, the practice of movement was meant to find stillness so that you could sit, so you could find comfort in your seated posture. So the sutras really talk a lot about that, and that's a big part of why we do our, medita why we do our yoga practice and our meditation. And oftentimes, don't you notice, like, when we come, because we start so early and we just come out of bed and we sit, sometimes it's really hard to stay still, to stay still within and to stay still externally because our bodies aren't just ready to come and sit and be. So um, a lot of times in our meditation here, we have teachers that do a lot of movement before they come to sitting. So it's not necessarily a yoga practice, but they might just be kind of loosening up the body, getting the joints a little bit more fluid, getting synovial fluids moving in there their body and then they come to sit so that their hips are a little bit more open, their blood flow is circulating more readily and it just kind of helps them to relax so that they're not so focused on their body and they can come back to the breath and to the stillness within. And how about as a teacher? How would this apply to you guys as yoga teachers? More grounded in width? More giving. Nice. Yeah. More giving because because you've given that to yourself. Right. Yeah, less distraction of the mind. It's um, kind of like the practice of writing or journaling when you wake up in the morning. You know, just get it off your mind and onto paper. Um, not having those thoughts be with you throughout the rest of the day, having a place where you can put them or having a time in which you acknowledge them, which could be your meditation practice. You see it come, you acknowledge it, and you let it go. You know, so it's not disturbing you. It doesn't keep coming back throughout the day. Maybe it does, but you know, there's the possibility of choosing to let it go because you've been aware and conscious. You've been that witness, that seer of your thoughts, and you've 
done with them what you needed to and then moved on. So then you are more available for your students and your practice. Mindful, mindfulness meditation. And that can be with anything, mindfulness meditation. It is a form of meditation. So it could be while you're brushing your teeth to really just be there with every brush, you know, feeling your gums and feeling the bristles against your teeth and really having that interaction so you're fully engaged and present. It could be washing dishes, it could be walking on the sand and, or on the ground, just feeling the earth under your feet, you know, whatever you're doing. You can have a mindfulness practice even with somebody else. You can have a conversation that is so mindful where you're so present and you're not distracted by anything else, you know. Your, your mind is still active because you're doing something. You're engaging in conversation or you're washing dishes, but you're, you're present in it. You're mindful in your practice. So you can do that and you can try it in anything. And that's one of the, um, one of the activities you know, that we offer is like, just walk around and see how mindful you can be in a day. You know, just everything you do, everything you um, experience. Eating is a great, great example. Like, taking your food and eating it really slowly, mindfully, respectfully, tasting the way the food, feeling the way the food tastes against your mouth and your cheeks and your lips and how it moves down your throat, you know, feeling every part of it as you experience it. It's very sensual. You know, mindfulness meditation is really about feeling things in their fullest experience. Um, one of the things that I think is really important, the reason that we learn meditation as yoga teachers is because I think we teach meditation. You know, it's what we're doing. We're teaching a form of meditation in our practice. Um, we may not be teaching the sitting form of meditation, but we um, certainly are teaching the asana form of meditation. There's also, I think, a great opportunity as a yoga teacher to incorporate sitting meditation into your class. And I feel like it's such an important component of what we what we learn. And like Brandy was saying, you know, opening to receiving. Like we come to that place where we're open to receiving so that we can move from that sitting meditation and take that into our yoga practice where we're just receptive and things flow through us. We don't have to think about what we're gonna say. We don't have to think about the next posture. It just comes naturally. But another important piece is actually sitting with your class. You know, maybe it's a few minutes before or a few minutes after class. Um, whenever I hire teachers here, I always tell them they're gonna have to teach meditation too. And some of them are like, I don't know how to teach meditation. I'm like, you're a yoga teacher, of course you do. You know, They just don't know, they haven't done the practice of teaching a meditation class. And the second they try it, they're like, oh yeah, of course, I already know how to meditate and I know how to teach it. It's just that they have separated those two things, but really, they're so integrated that um, you don't have to create that separation. It's really, I think it's an important, valuable, and almost an essential thing to be able to do as a yoga teacher. And the way to learn how to meditate is to meditate. <laughs> so that is your practice. Is That's the way you teach meditation as well, is to meditate. And having your feet flat on the floor is another really great energetic you know, connection. So you're connecting to the earth with your feet on the floor. And the base of our feet you know, has such a, a strong energetic um, receptivity that, you know, it's a great way to sit and your spine is still erect so you're moving energy straight through. So I wouldn't worry, you know, if you're not sitting in the way that is traditionally yoga this is, or traditionally meditation. You know, this is just what has been taught for, for years and for various reasons. But you really always have to adapt to what suits you and your body best and know that if your intention is there, that you're moving energy through, you will be doing yoga. You will be doing meditation. And, and also considering, you know, how you progress I think the most important piece of that, you know, in knowing that, that maybe it doesn't get better, so to speak, over time, it's really just a matter of not having the expectation for something to continue to occur again and again. Because you may have one day where you're just like, whoa, what just happened? I just blissed out and went to another world. And then you may never experience that again in your lifetime. Or you may have it again the next day, you know, but without the expectation, you let go of that, that need to achieve. And meditation is the opposite of the need to achieve. It's the, it's the idea of being rather than doing and getting to. And, and part, of, part of that is really letting go of wanting anything to be different than it is. You know, it's like just sitting with what is, is the practice of being, the practice of meditation. And the second we start getting caught up in, I want something to be different, I want something that I don't have, I want something that I had before, I don't want what I had right now or what I have right now or what I had before, then we lose our presence. 
you know, we lose the ability to stay in that state of stillness and quiet mind because we're just thinking about what we have, what we don't have, what we want, what we don't want. Um, so if you can release those expectations and come to that state of surrender, you'll find that, you know, some days it's just easy and it just shows up, you know, and other days, today my mind was all over the place. I don't know why. It was just like, I'm just not in that state of, of presence today. And then we did our practice and I was a little bit closer, you know, and it just, today it was more the, um, the asana practice or at least teaching it than the meditation that got me into that mindful state. So, and some days it's running out and playing in the ocean, you know. And if my mind doesn't settle, then I let it go. And I'm like, I'll just practice again tomorrow. Yeah. You know? Are we going to talk about um, at any time very not wanting to address things if they're going to come up later? That's why I asked say that um, the subtle difference between being okay with things as they are and, um, and then how do you manifest things you want? Being indifferent, like, okay, yeah. I'm not going to complain about my job or my partner or where I'm at. Well, how do you get somewhere else? Right. So that's kind of, um, yeah, we do move more into that in like the third and fourth cycle because it's really about manifesting, but it's manifesting without attachment to the outcome. You know, so when you're putting out your intentions, when you're even now, you know, when we're talking about intentions and, and maybe our intentions is, are letting go of something for the full moon, even with that, we let it go, but we don't attach to how we let go or if we really let go. We just allow it to happen, you know, and trust that it will come as it needs to in the right time in the right place, in the way that it is meant to show up for us in our lives. Um, so yeah, there is that fine line definitely between having a goal, having an intention, having a manifestation, and then being okay with what is, you know? Because they seem almost like they don't go together, but they do, it's just that one is creating the intention with letting go of the outcome. So it's like, um, I think it's Deepak Chopra who says that intention is desire without the attachment to the outcome. So you still can have that desire you can still have that fulfillment of what you want to create, but without attaching to the outcome. So you just let go. You let go once you put out your intention and you continue to live that, breathe that, think that, you know, manifest it in your, in your um, practice, in your life, you know, writing about it, whatever it does, whatever you need to do to build that up, to have that be a strong focus in your presence and the way the universe is hearing you and listening to you, then let go. You know, keep putting it out there, but let go every time so that you're not attached to it having to happen and it has to happen in this way. So, but we'll, our, our fourth cycle especially is really about manifesting and creating our dreams and dreaming our world into being, so.